for watching it. Thanks for joining me and uh, the 20 members of our crew who will be pretending to laugh tonight. <laughs> you know, we've all been wondering when is life gonna get back to normal? And uh, the answer is, how the hell would I know? I don't know things, but <laughs> even if we do get a vaccine, sometime in the next few months, uh, Dr. Fauci says we might not be back to normal until 2022. So hang on to your hydroxy if you still have it. Remember when we were kids and we all thought we'd have flying cars by 2022? Now it's like maybe in the future we'll be able to go to a movie without killing our grandma. <laughs> Cases are going up and up. I think they had like the third highest rate of in or report of infections uh, of, of so far today. Much of that is attributed to what they call pandemic fatigue. People are sick of being careful, so they relax and they start doing risky things which I get it, but that's not the way it works. You can't just stop because it's annoying. It, it's a virus, not glee. It's, you know... <laughs> Listen, here's a, here's a map that might be of interest to you if you're curious as to whether this masking and lockdown works. You see all the red? That's the United States. Those are the COVID outbreaks here. Up Above that, that is Canada. It doesn't look too bad up there, does it? Even adjusted for population, they've had one-fifth as many infections as we have. But our president doesn't want to know about that. If you vote for Biden, it means no kids in school, no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgiving, no Christmas, and no Fourth of July together. Other than that, you have a wonderful life. <laughs> That's right. Joe Biden wants to murder Santa Claus, kids. <laughs> But this is the message Team Trump seems to be going with down the stretch. All the spokes monsters have been unleashed. Yeah, look, the American people have a very clear choice when it comes to COVID. You can vote on Joe Biden or you will be locked down. Your schools will be closed. Your churches will be closed. You won't have social gatherings. It will be a lockdown versus President Trump where, where we are safely reopening this country. <laughs> My, yeah. We're safely reopening the country. President Trump got the virus himself. And so did you, by the way. You can't safely open the door to your office, never mind the country. <laughs> Meanwhile, the vice president tested negative today, even though several aides. And uh, yesterday, we learned his number two guy on the Space Force tested positive for the virus. Trump put Mike Pence in charge of two things. Space Force and COVID, and somehow he managed to combine them into one. Here's a question. <laughs> that I don't think has been asked. If Biden wins, what happens to the Space Force? Do we have to keep pretending that's a real thing? <laughs> Mike Pence has been on the, uh, oh crap, I might be the next Dan Quayle trail. And he's got an interesting style out there. When his plane lands, he hits the ground running. Chariots of your fired. Um, I think when you're running, it's harder for the flies to land on your head. Meanwhile, Donald Trump's out there bitching about the big tech companies because uh, they've been unwilling to help spread his smears against the Bidens, which I understand. No one likes to have their messages suppressed, but rather than retaliating, maybe just stop lying all the time and see if that solves it. This has been a very frustrating time for shirt tucker Rudy Giuliani, who's been forced to find alternate outlets who will allow him to shovel the dirt he's dug up on Hunter Biden. He walked around the house nude, taking pictures consistently of his private parts, sometimes, sometimes FaceTiming women, sometimes FaceTiming women while smoking crack. It looks to be that he smokes crack twice a day. There are many pictures of him smoking crack. <laughs> That's right, and I know a thing or two about crack. Have you seen my teeth? <laughs> Hunter Biden is admittedly a recovering drug addict. He's also not running for president, but nobody tell Rudy he's on a roll. It's just completely unjustifiable not to cover this story. It's completely un-American. It's inconsistent with everything we were founded to be. This could be the worst invasion of rights in America. I mean, it's like putting the Japanese in, in, in camp, except it's being done to all of us. You know, Mr. Mayor, we're gonna this leave it there. Outrageous. 
Yeah, Eric Bully's like, uh, Mr. Mayor, did you just say this is like a Japanese American internment camp? Good night. Uh, we're going to take a commercial. Anyway, it is nice to see Rudy do an interview with his pants on. The president was live on stage in. in oh, thanks, guys. In Tampa today, where he introduced a special guest. This president and his team are focused on not only destroying the virus and building back the economy, they're focused on the creating ways for people to safely stop isolating and start gathering with friends again on a safe distances. Yeah. Melania called out the media for spreading her husband's three favorite things, which are hate, negativity, and fear. In a time when hate, negativity, and fear are the messages the media streams into our homes and the large tech companies are protecting political censorship, we need to remember what is really important. Alimony. That's <laughs> that, and for life. And my husband is disgusting. The president had to postpone one of his rallies today because of weather. He was unable to visit the people of Fayetteville because of Tropical Storm Zeta, but he was able to meet with Lil Wayne. I'm not sure if this happened today or what, but I wish I'd been invited, that's for sure. Trump tried to hand him a bag of Halloween candy when he first saw him. <laughs> This, look, they have the same color hair. Look at that. It's <laughs> young money and no money. You know, Trump used to love doing these rallies. He would go and people would cheer. But now that he's losing and still has to go to these towns he hates, he's not doing a very good job of hiding his disdain. Get the hell out to vote, because if I don't get Iowa, I won't believe that one. I may never have to come back here again if I don't get Iowa. I'll never be back. You understand that, Kim? Hey, you know, it's windy as hell out here. Is that sun hot or what? Yeah. Yeah. What the hell do you think I'm doing here on a freezing night with 45 degree wind? It's freezing and it's raining. Nobody told me you're gonna have 40 mile an hour winds today. Would somebody give me a hand? I'm out here, what the hell time is it? And it's freezing. I could have left here a half an hour ago. I'm standing here freezing. We're all freezing our asses off. And I'm sitting in the hottest sun I've ever felt. At least you're down there with each other. I'm all up here and that wind is blowing. Nice trucks. You think I could hop into one of them and drive it away? I'd love to know. just drive the hell out of here. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. I hate you. You know, when he's in prison, he'll wish he could go back to Omaha. Those of you who have um, young children are probably very aware that Halloween's on Saturday. Uh, a lot of people have been asking if uh, I'm gonna do the thing where parents pretend to have eaten their kids candy this year. And the answer is 2020 has been hard enough. Let's revisit that again next year. <laughs> but this lockdown does make you realize that trick-or-treating really is the only fun part about Halloween. Otherwise, it's, uh, hey kids, you wanna carve some holes in a gourd? It's like nothing. We're doing costumes anyway. My daughter Jane's dressing as Wendy from Peter Pan, and we wanted our three-year-old Billy to be uh, Peter, but he won't put the costume on. Uh, he's, he ran around in his underpants instead, so he's gonna be Spider-Man again. This year, Captain Hook is gonna have to fight Peter Parker instead. You know, Google just put out their annual list of the most searched costumes right now. The most searched costume overall in the United States this year is which? Which is number one, followed by Dinosaur and Harley Quinn, still hanging in there. Although I will say, just because Harley Quinn's the most searched doesn't mean it's for costume purposes. It also means your husband isn't always working in his office. <laughs> Google Frightgeist is the name of their page, and you can search the most popular costumes by city. The most searched costume um, in LA, let me show you the, how this map works here, is, uh, where is this? Okay, so the most searched costume in LA, according to Google, is Rabbit. Which I don't know how that could. I, well, I bet we won't see one rabbit this weekend. According to my research, the top costumes here in Hollywood are aluminum foil Iron Man and meth head Hulk. But Google <laughs> lets you search on the map. So in New York, you want to guess what New York? In New York, the top costume is which? Same as nationally. In Washington, D.C., has to be Trump, right? No. Nope. Number one in D.C. is Beetlejuice. Phoenix is gonna be a town full of Groots this weekend. Alaska is weird. In Anchorage, the top costume is fish, which it makes sense, I guess. But in Fairbanks, 
Llama is number one. <laughs> the top costume in Dallas-Fort Worth is 1990s. I guess people dressing like they're from the 90s. In Reno, it's skeleton. Be careful in El Paso, Jackson, Mississippi, and Columbia, South Carolina, because the top costume there is Purge, all right? <laughs> number one in Cleveland is Donut. And the number one costume in Mankato, Minnesota, is Lufa this year. <laughs> Probably just one guy looking for a, a bed, bath, and beyond, but we were talking today. I don't know if kids are gonna be trick-or-treating in my neighborhood, and if they do, what do you do when they knock on the door? Yell at their parents? I don't know, what, do you have to have candy? What do you do? So because of that, a lot of people have come up with creative ways to distribute the candy to the children. Like they built a candy catapult <laughs> to shoot at the kids. Someone made a motion activated touchless candy dispenser. This is a field full of candy on sticks. Someone came up with a candy robot to give stuff to the kids, a candy conveyor belt. I don't know how that works exactly. Uh, they got a zip line and our friend Science Bob built a candy cannon that fires Skittles into the air and all kinds. See, that's old fashioned American ingenuity. I love the idea of getting creative to get the candies. So we built something and let's go live now to Guillermo who's on the roof of our building. Hi Guillermo. How you doing Jimmy? Uh, oh, you're the one who wore the rabbit costume, huh? Yeah, they told me I look cute. And why are you, <laughs> may I ask, why are you dancing to no music right now? Oh, I love dancing, Jimmy. Okay, all right, so what kind of, I see you have an assortment of candy. Which is your favorite in the, in the bucket? Uh, Snickers. Snickers, okay. And what well, you can see next to Guillermo, we built a candy chute that is six stories long. It goes all the way down to the ground where we have trick-or-treaters standing by. Hi there, what's your name? Gray. Gray? Your name's Gray? Yes. You ready for candy, Gray? Please. All right, F Guillermo. Trick or treat. Okay, ready. Three, Three here we go. Two, Fire one. away. It goes down the tube and into the, just like the bank. Great. What do you Thank think, you. Ray? Uh, I got a lot of Snickers. Yeah, you got a lot of Snickers, so don't tell Guillermo, he loves those. <laughs> Are you happy, you. Gray? Yes. All right, good talking to you. All right. <laughs> Get another kid in there. <laughs> Guillermo, is your son going trick or treating? Uh, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Nope. Seems like you'd know by now, huh? No. All right. Okay. Uh, who's, who do we have on the ground there? What's your name? Gabby. Hi, Gabby. How are you? Good. Gabby, huh? Yeah. You get it? All right, Guillermo, release some candy for Gabby, will you? Here we go. Three, two, one. All right. Down the chute and into the sack. Or not. What happened? Uh-oh, we might have a clog, huh? <laughs> Gabby, shake that thing, will you? No, no, yeah, that thing. Yeah, give it a... You know, <laughs> we're you know, pulling a bunny over the side. All right, well, you know what, Gabby? That's the kind of year it's been. Maybe, uh, we'll, maybe we'll give you a ride to CVS, okay? Yep, Santa. All right, well, if that isn't the saddest thing ever. Yeah, Santa, did you take it? Sorry, Gabby. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I, I vowed not to disappoint the kids this year, and... All right, all right, should we take a break? All right. We got a good show for you tonight. We, uh, oh, from the world champion Los Angeles Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw and Cody Bellinger. We have music tonight from Perfume Genius, and we'll be right back with Chris Evans. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you want to see all our latest videos, click the subscribe button, and if you don't, click anyway and close your eyes when they come on.